In this video, we're going to walk through assignment number 54 together, which is documenting preventative services and an immunization for Ella Rainwater. We have a lot of information there, but we're going to go ahead and click start assignment, and then we'll open that detail up once we get into her health record. So we're going to click find patient so that we can search for her name and start an encounter. And we're going to select office visit so we can begin that encounter. And this is a follow-up visit with Dr. Martin. We're going to click save so that we can navigate to her health record. And we're told that she had a recent um, bone density test. So from the record, we're going to select preventative services. And you can see there are a couple of different sections. The, per, the bone density test can be found in procedures. So we're gonna click add, and then we're gonna select bone density from the drop-down menu. The instructions tell us it happened one week ago from today, so whatever day you happen to be completing that, and the results were a normal study. So we're going to click save. Now we're going to go to the immunization section of her health record so that we can document a tetanus booster that she had. And we're going to scroll down. If you're looking at the instructions in the workflow manual, which hopefully you're using the instructions I provided in the classroom, uh, the workflow manual indicates it's a DTaP vaccine, but that's not actually correct because the DTaP vaccine is for... Um, is for babies. <laughs> there is a series of five to complete that injection. We actually need to document the Tdap, which is a uh, or the TD, which is a tetanus booster. Before we do that, I did want to kind of show you around here and what we're looking at. Uh, you can see that the columns that we have include information, um, a collection of information about each individual vaccination that we might have uh, or injection. And as we scroll down through the rows, we can see the different types of vaccines. You'll notice that some of the vaccines have three rows included, whereas others have five or some just have one. Um, the reason for that is that the number of rows indicate how many series are in the injection or how many injections are in the series rather to complete that immunization. So for example, the DTaP requires five injections or five shots to complete that series. Um, one of the great things about an EHR system, while it doesn't do it in this pared down student version, in a real system it would provide you with a window as to when the next vaccination in that series had to occur. So there's a time frame in which you have to take the second vaccine after the first and so on and so forth. And the system also generally offers reminders about when those windows have opened and are closing. So in this one, we're going to document our TD vaccine. So we're just going to open up the assignment description there and, um, and use that actually. I need to make this a little bit bigger so I can see the plus sign here. And then I'll shrink my window again. Oops. There we go. Um, so we're gonna select TD, and the dose is the amount given. We always use what we call a leading zero in the medical field. So if I didn't have the zero here, that decimal point, which we refer to as a naked decimal point, is incredibly easy to miss at a glance, especially if the information is being printed, or copied, or faxed. So we always call what we refer to as a lead, we always use what we refer to as a leading zero. The date is fine as it is. Dr. Martin's our provider. Now the root in sight, the root is the method that it was administered into the body. So whether it was an orally taken medication or a topical treatment. In this case, it's an injection and it's an intramuscular injection. And the site is the right deltoid, which is the upper arm. So these are just a couple of examples of why, number one, your, um, your abbreviations are so important, and number two, why you need a good understanding of anatomy. The manufacturer and lot number, I'm just going to copy and paste from over here. 
And you might be wondering why you need that information. Um, it's a quality control method. So for example, let's say that we received a batch of injections and we had, after giving those injections, we had several patients have similar symptoms that were not um, normal or expected. There might be an issue with that batch of vaccination. So you know, we'd want to pull that batch, contact anyone that may have had uh, one of the dosages from that batch, maybe contact the manufacturer, depending on exactly what's happening. Also vice versa, let's say um, we have uh, a contraceptive injection such as Depo-Provera that we're giving to women as a contraceptive. If something happened to the batch and the manufacturer became aware that it was ineffective, then they can contact our office because they know where those vials went. Um, and we can pull those and then also kind of work with our patients to come up with some, um, some temporary solution while we wait to get them back um, back on their normal dosage. So uh, that's why we collect some of that information. And then the date of expiration, I think it tells us it's, uh, th is it three years from now? Yes. Uh, and then we're not given a reaction, so we're just going to go ahead and click save there. It's taking just a second. And then once that's done, we should get our usual green save successful bar across the top. And then we'll be able to scroll down and see that that vaccination has indeed saved the patient's health record. And we can see that. Um, with an EHR system, there are some other things that you have to document with respect to an immunization or injection, such as the date, the time given, your name. But in, a, in an EHR situation, all of that information is time stamped based on the time and date that it was um, indicated or documented in the record and my name would be attached with this because I've signed in under my own name. Um, so that's it for that one. You click back to the assignment, submit your post case quiz and submit and that's it.